Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 23. We're going to be looking at comparing fuels. In this particular video, what we want to do is compare and contrast fuels from organic sources to biofuels, including ethanol. Now this is a very broad scope when we're looking at this as a student outcome. So it's important that you have a number of examples that you can use here and also see this particular slide as, uh, I guess, a, um, an introduction. Certainly not everything. You can certainly add to um, your knowledge once you have a look at some of these examples that I'll give you a look at here. There's a good range of different uh, properties and also uh, advantages that you can talk about in the use of different fuel sources and we're just going to touch on a few of those in this particular video. So here is a comparison table. In this particular table I've chosen four fuels, methane, propane and octane. All of these are organic fuels that are obtained from fossil fuels sources uh, such as uh, natural gas, crude oil, uh, and even coal, not necessarily any of these, but those are the three groups of fossil fuels. And so from those, we can extract a number of different fuel sources. In particular, crude oil has a, um, a large number of fractions within it, which we can then crack into smaller fractions. Of course, propane at room temperature is a gas, so it's also going to potentially be a component of uh, natural gas, uh, or one we can extract through the process of cracking of crude oil. Octane is a fraction that's obtained directly from crude oil. And methane um, is a type of biogas as well as being a component of natural gas. Ethanol is the biofuel in this particular example. It um, is sourced from sugarcane through the process of fermentation. And of course, as you go each of, into each of these fuels in a lot of detail, you'll find that uh, looking for the sources, looking for the levels of refinement or processing that need to occur with each of these also can require a certain uh, amount of energy input. So whilst the combustion of fuels is an energy output process, an exothermic process, there can certainly be a number of energy inputs that are required in order to uh, collect, refine, and then to be able to use each of these fuel sources. Now one of the things that you should be looking at, of course, when you are comparing different fuels is their combustion. And these equations are all assuming complete combustion. That is, we have sufficient oxygen in order to completely form carbon dioxide as one of our products uh, and not carbon monoxide or carbon particles as soot. Um, this is very important for two reasons. The first reason is that we do have a decrease in the energy output if we are carrying out incomplete combustion. Uh, also, the products of carbon and carbon monoxide uh, uh, increase their uh, negative impact on the environment. And so we want to try and, uh, I guess, compare each of these with one another in a consistent way so that we can make some conclusions. When you look at all four of these equations, Three of these are comparing one mole of the fuel and just one of these is comparing two moles. So if you like, in order to level the playing field, we can halve the mole ratios, uh, eight and nine, in order to make more significant comparisons between uh, all three of these in terms of their molar ratios. So looking at this directly, you can see certainly in a comparison between ethanol and octane, that the amount of oxygen required for the complete combustion process is significantly less for ethanol than what it is for octane. This is one very important measure of the difference between each of these two. The other very important measure, of course, is the amount of carbon dioxide that's released into the atmosphere per mole of fuel um, used. And again, it's much lower for ethanol than it is for octane. But if we need to use twice as much 
uh, ethanol or four times as much ethanol or a hundred times as much ethanol to generate the same amount of energy as octane, then those figures that don't look good for octane may actually tell a different story. So whilst the mole, um, the, the ratio of moles is very important, sometimes it's easier for us to look at the amount of energy that is produced per gram. And you can see in the final uh, column of this table, I've given you four values which represent the amount of energy in kilojoules per gram which is released. Remember here the delta H value is a negative value with these combustion reactions. So this is the amount of energy that's available per gram of each of these fuels. So you can now see that obviously methane produces the greatest amount of energy per gram. Uh, and whilst the difference between octane and ethanol is not insignificant, um, the, certainly the ratios are nowhere near as high as they are for the ratios of oxygen required and carbon dioxide released. These are just some of the factors that you can look at when you're comparing different fuels, including those from organic sources such as uh, the fossil fuels with biofuel sources such as, F, uh, such as ethanol. Of course, the clearing of the land for the planting of the crops, the harvesting of those crops, the fermentation process and so on, which takes us from, um, I guess, the starting point to ethanol that we can use as a fuel source is uh, another factor that needs to be considered. And the other reason, I guess, why we want to just quickly mention ethanol here is that we do have in Australia uh, a number of uh, versions of E10, which is 10% ethanol. Now this has been around for probably 20 odd years and the bottom line is that the ethanol content of fuels has really not increased very significantly in all of that time. Modifications to engines are the main reason and Australia is still relatively small in terms of its population and therefore in terms of its demand for motor vehicles and so therefore there hasn't been significant pressure placed on car manufacturers to make the modifications necessary to cope with the increased ethanol. One very important point that we need to note here is that when we look at our first three fuels all of these are hydrocarbons so there's no polarity in these molecules and there are only dispersion forces between the molecules. There's no interaction with molecules such as water. That's not the case for ethanol. Ethanol has this OH functional group and the OH functional group is polar and therefore it is going to interact with water molecules. And so this is an, uh, one of the reasons why car manufacturers need to modify engines in order for higher proportions of ethanol. It's one, there are other reasons as well, but it's one very important reason is because of the interaction between ethanol and water. So have a look perhaps at a few other examples of fuel sources. Uh, extend your comparison to maybe a few other areas such as environmental impact, economic impacts, uh, socio um, cultural impacts, in order to get a good rounded understanding of exactly. Uh, how we can compare each of these different types of fuels with one another. And thanks for watching.